you live from the Comedy Store. How are you guys doing today? This is a new episode of Kill Tony. Let's give it up for Tony Hinchcliffe. Yeah. What's up, Boo Boo Baby? Another beautiful day. We have a, yeah. a new set, everybody. Give it up for that, right? Yeah. Somebody went to Chinatown over the weekend and uh, donated a bunch of cool uh, things to the set. Wow. It was me. I went to Chinatown and bought some things, including this fake sword for a few bucks. <laughs> and uh, all these things were a dollar each. Really? Yeah. Except for this one. I asked, uh, I thought it was really cool and it was hanging from the ceiling, so it was the one thing that I went up to the Chinese cashier and I'm like, hey, what's that one mean? And she goes, uh, roast, a barbecue roast. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm like, I gotta have that. That one was ten bucks. Wow. Thank you. <laughs> Worth it. <laughs> Spare no expense here at, uh, Dead well, Squad's Kill Tony. I, I, I'm mad that you didn't invite me to Chinatown, that's kind of fucked up. Yeah. And I also look at these things right now as big punching bags. I'm having a horrible day today. Oh, I, yeah. It's by mail day. Oh I, I my check my God. mail every two months, and today was that day, and it's just an awful day. It's one of the worst days, but it's better to do it all at once than have it spread out for two months, right? What would you say was your bill to paycheck ratio? Um, it was more like court, you're supposed to be there, oops, you didn't be oh. there, shit like that. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> and like, oh, yeah, license plates, and oh, yeah, driver's license. Whoa. <laughs> wow. Like, it was like all the worst shit ever. Yeah, I check my mail every day. You shouldn't do that. You just do it like me. It seems like it would be really stressful if I did that. Yeah. Fuck yeah. I want to punch all these things so much. Well, no punching because you know who's here to make sure nobody gets out of control. Timmy Hat is here. Whoa. Look at that. that. What the hell? Queef Latifah. <laughs> is that pajamas? No, it's a jumper. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> Thank goodness our head of security is here. Yes. Ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together for the one and only The Iron Patriot, as always, in the house. I will lead these new against anyone who is threaten our way of life. I am the Iron Patriot. Yeah. That's one of his uh, many awkward catchphrases. Um, can you give us another one? For every life you save, there's a million new ways to die. <laughs> That's enough. You only get one day. Tomorrow belongs to me. You really have no idea where that microphone is. <laughs> I think you need to take just a half a step backwards. I speak out of my banana. I think it's pretty funny. <laughs> that he, the, is it, is it the mic stand's again? just going to get knocked over at any point? <laughs> Blame it. Oh, wow, look. Okay. It's what I imagine like a boys lock, a, a blind boys locker room. Is that broken already? It doesn't feel like it's very stable. Just let go of it for a second. There you go. It's completely stable. Stop touching it. Stop touching it and don't take any steps forward. I notice now, because I've been watching, I have a good angle on it. I noticed the last week that we've had your own mic stand that every time you say something, you get excited and you start walking forward with your, with your palm out in front of you with that light. I need to be careful. Hell yeah. I heard he had a song that he wanted to. Oh yeah, you <laughs> sent in a uh, you sent in some type of track. He wanted to do a song uh, yeah. to get things started. So uh, put your hands together for the Iron Patriot, everybody. Get that loaded up. Okay, here we go. I'm <laughs> 
don't believe that. I am that nigga. <laughs> 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 the the and we like this. We shine like this, baddie. It's awesome. I can tell you're really out of breath in that thing. <laughs> Either that or you're choking up after saying the N-word with Tiffany Haddish in the room. You're gonna you're gonna wake up the little temptress back there. Um, first of all, all right. That was really amazing. That was awesome. Thank you. Thank you. I was expecting there to be uh, you know, I was expecting when I heard that hit song from the late nineties. Um, that it would be like an Iron Patriot version of the rap. What I love about you, Patriot, is that you didn't even do that. You just said the actual lyrics to the actual song. But only the first two verses. He cuts it out before the third verse, because you don't have that memorized. Right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I should have done a Bones, Bones, and Harmony. I saw you like a song like that. I saw one of your routines. Yeah. Yeah, thank you. One of my routines. Okay. Um, but one of the things that I love the most, though, is before uh, before this, he goes, Hey, I sent a track in. I emailed the track to the show. I'm going to do a rap. And I asked him out at the top of the stairway, not even ten minutes ago, when he brought it up. And I go, I just out of curiosity, how long is that? He goes, 90 seconds. Now, i got to tell you, Patriot. I don't know if that body armor suit has a watch on it. But that was not 90 seconds. I didn't want you to cut me out, Tony. I was scared you're going to think it's too long to cut me out. How, do you ever say the N-word when you're not in the suit? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, a lot, I'm around a lot of black people on Hollywood Boulevard. It'd be very dangerous. You got that right. <laughs> I love it. But, you know, I, they don't know what color I am, so I guess it doesn't matter. Because you can say it if you're black, so I, they might think I'm black. <laughs> there is no way they're going to think you're black, Patriot. You are the whitest sounding guy ever. I love. You might even be Asian, actually. <laughs> you know, I first came here four years ago because people always told me I look like Polly Shore. And I went and talked to Dean, and he said I did look like Polly Shore, but Polly Shore doesn't do any movies, so he doesn't need a stand in. Good idea on the costume. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Now we see why you cover yourself from head to toe. But he said I look better looking than Polly. I'm not that bad. Hell yeah, the iron weasel, everybody. Uh, <laughs> all right, I'm already, uh, he has me pumped up to get this thing started. You guys ready to bring up our two awesome guests tonight, huh? So excited about this. Uh, I guess first I'll bring up a uh, writer from Comedy Central's The Burn and uh, The Howard Stern Show and many other great things. One of my funniest friends, regular, paid regular comedian, appearing together for the very funny Ben Chiaflalo is here. Oh yeah, he ignores the Patriots, high five, and comes right in for the shakes. There you go. Ben Chiaflalo. And uh, why don't we, uh, with no hesitation, bring up the second guest as well. You know this guy from both hit television shows like Saturday Night Live and Mad TV. Another extremely, extremely funny friend of mine. I'm so happy to have him here. Put your hands together for one of the funniest people I've ever met in my life. The one and only Jeff Richards, everybody. Live in the flesh. He's here. Fuck yes. Fuck yes. He's a master impressionist. I'm number one. That's his impression of me, though. Don't judge him by that one. Yes. <laughs> Fuck yeah. I'm excited to have you guys here. Uh, what do you think so far? What do you think of the Patriots routine tonight? It's great. Yeah, I liked it. Did you make that suit? Um, I, had a, I commissioned a sculptor to make it a year and a half ago in Norway. <laughs> 
have you thought about doing some touch up to it? Because it's sort of. Well, he sent it dirty. He wanted to look battle worn. Oh, that's that's one way to sell a shit suit. <laughs> Hey, you want a brand new suit or you want a suit that looks like you've already been in battle, baby? That'll be $6,000. Yeah, he was too lazy, no. yeah. Your this next is battery awesome. is in your stomach or something? What? Why is the microphone on your stomach? Well, I have a speaker in my chest and I can't mic my mouth because it's underneath. I got a speaker on my chest and it needs to be down low the sound's coming out here. We're going to find out that he's actually a little person this whole time. <laughs> <laughs> Two of them are like on yeah, each other's like, right. like, like <laughs> shoulders. This is what Brad Williams, Nick Nowicki, and, uh... Ah. All right. Anyway. It's a midget joke. You get it. Um, fuck yeah, the Patriot is in the house. It's all happening. So you guys know what we're doing on this, right? We're talking to people. Um, yeah. Comics do a minute, and we're supposed to give them advice, advice on them? Well, you can give them advice, you can give them feedback, you can do anything. You can talk about who they are, we can talk to them for a couple minutes, you know. It's very unorthodox. All right, I'm down. Sure. <laughs> what have you been up to lately, Jeff? Anything crazy? Just finished my album. Uh, oh yeah, Jeff Richards' greatest hits. That's right. And at the end of at the end of uh, this evening's show, um, he's going to be closing it out with an exclusive first time release here on Death Squad's Kill Tony. Wow. Uh, him and his band are going to a uh, one man band, John. So that's exciting. But we haven't done it yet. Guys. What's that? So we haven't done it yet. Well, there you go. <laughs> Save your applause. Um, well, awesome. Fuck yeah. Very excited about that and that. What do you guys say we get it started? Get some comedians up here, huh? All right. Well, I pull out of the magical bucket. Many, many people signed up. And uh, let's do it. Your first comedian tonight. Dean Horak. <laughs> Talking about gateway drugs. Fuck yeah, welcome, Dean. So uh, they say that uh, marijuana is a gateway drug, but uh, it's kind of really just the first drug. It's sort of like saying uh, breast milk is a gateway beverage. I uh, was eating uh, some garlic the other day. I'm kind of freaking out. I was eating garlic yesterday, fresh garlic, and it burnt. Pretty sure I know what that means. Might be a vampire. Uh, any uh, Game of Thrones fans out there? They want to touch them? Yeah, that church will probably be called dudes to get their dicks chopped off. There's a lot of castration in that show. It's a bit, it's a bit much sometimes, right? I, uh, I think that, that uh, encyclopedias should have little samples of Snapple under the cover. I uh, joined Instagram uh, like a month ago. I'm still waiting for my weed in the mail. Uh, people um, people nice. are afraid uh, they don't want to die alone. I think dying alone is bad. But that's probably better than a lot of people dying in big groups all the time. Uh, that's all I got. There you go. Dean, What do you think about that, Tony? Well, I, uh, you weren't really talking into the microphone, Dean. Um, that thing there is a, a sound amplification system. And it really helps. I wanted to interrupt through your whole thing, but uh, I didn't want to, you know. Is there a smaller person inside of you? <laughs> Somehow the Iron Patriot's mic is louder than yours. Uh, I mean, we can hear him clear. Well, it's because you weren't talking into it. You had it down below your chest. Talking to the mic. Got it. There you go. Yeah, it's sort of a big deal. Um, some funny things in there, man. I like the Instagram joke. That's fun. Uh, I like how I, it's interesting. Most comedians like to, uh, you know, like start with a laugh. You're very patient. Uh, I mean, the last, I mean, the last few were the best ones. Like I felt like you opened. I don't know. I don't know. Jeff Richards. Hi, everybody. I'm Jeff Richards. <laughs> Yeah, you gotta keep the mic up a little bit. <laughs> but I miss most of it because of that. Um, you got a Brent Morin thing going. It's just you know, exciting. It's very hip right now. Um, <laughs> Morin. Um, yeah, like I missed most of the set. I couldn't hear it. Right, right. here. 
Yeah, you know, I mean, it's just one of those situations where your microphone was so far away from your mouth that it was just hard to pay attention to it. And uh, I guess I we, would say this. I guess we all learned something here. And maybe like, because as you, you were doing, like when you would get to the punchline, you would start to already look down to the next joke. You maybe how many sell times? it more, look out more. The how many times have you done stand up? Uh, this is my fourth time. He's only done it four times. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. 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 You learned a big one tonight with a mic. The mic's important. And I don't, are you, do you consider yourself like a one-liner comic? Is that the comic? Uh, not really, but I love my other shit. wasn't that big of a fun. Yeah, I'd say you might also benefit from just winging it. You know? Because you, you seem like you could be really funny, but your jokes are very vulnerable, and some of them were kind of okay. But I would go on stage and just try to talk about what you really want to, what might just come out naturally. And you have an every man kind of thing, you know, like your voice is sort of like, a, you know, you could be a plumber if you wanted to. Yeah, so you're not an awkward... <laughs> you know, I mean, what are you talking about, Jack? You don't seem like an awkward one-liner type of person. I feel like you would, like, beat me you up. Know, you know, because you kind of talk like this. Yeah. Kind of yeah. like... Yeah. And, uh, Normally they're softer. Um, but yeah, there you go. There you go. Steam per root, everybody. <laughs> At B P A C G G G, or is that nine nine nine? That's not even a real Twitter. Oh my God! What did you think that you had to have Twitter to do the show? <laughs> hey, how, how do you guys feel about castration jokes? It's kind of painful to hear. Do you think it's funny? Do you like them? You know the Game of, Game of Thrones thing you did? You know, I've watched a few episodes of Game of Thrones. I really haven't seen any penises come yeah. off yet. What is that? Something that happens later? <laughs> oh wow. Yeah, that sort of ruins it for me. That's why. The, uh, all right. Well, that's like one comedian down, everybody. Hey, at Vinny Fastline, Vinny Fastline, talking about creeping. Just as crazy. So, yes, I am creepy. Very creepy. Uh, I don't get laid much. I didn't get laid much back in college either. Actually, uh, you know, I. I was so used to all my roommates, like, fucking chicks all the time, like, listening to them fall asleep to that, that I, now I need to put porn on to fall asleep. You know what I mean? And, like, I don't have any, I don't have any roommates, so I gotta knock on my neighbor's door, like, hey, can you guys fuck a little bit louder? I'm trying to get some sleep around here. Weird dude. I don't know. So when I do get laid, when I get laid once, they don't want to sleep with me again. I can't figure out why. I don't know why. But maybe it's probably because, I don't know, I go cross-eyed when I fuck. <laughs> Just me? All right. Crushing one minute of jokes. <laughs> I want to have kids though one day. I want to have kids. I want to. I want to have children. Talk about my experiences growing up as a child. You know what I mean? I want to talk about that. I want to. I, I, I realize I can't talk about music. Music generation. Like you can't do that. You know, because like my my dad used to listen to classics like The Temptations. You know, my my grandpa Frank Sinatra. Like what am I supposed to tell my kids, grandkids? This right here is a classic. Bye. Lil Wayne! There you go, he's hit his minute by that meowing, uh, oh. meowing cat in 60 seconds. Um, well, yeah. you definitely talked into the mic. Yeah, that's a, that's a huge improvement. Um, <laughs> fuck yeah. Now, why is Pete Corcione doing this? <laughs> stuff uh, Pete? At PDC. Yeah. <laughs> uh, how real are we supposed to be with, like... Do, do open micers ever freak out on, on you for being No, that's crazy? what the Iron Patriot's for. He's the head of security. We can say whatever we want, and in uh, two and a half minutes after that, he's going to be right on top of the guy. Like, probably <laughs> on his back. By the way, for, the, for those of you that don't know, the Iron Patriot can't see where he's going. <laughs> he can only walk at 90 degree angles. He takes the bus here because he can't sit down. In his suit, he can't sit down. He can't take off his suit, and it's extremely hot in this suit. It's 40 pounds worth of... What's it made out of? Fiberglass. <laughs> there fiberglass. you go. 40 pounds of fiberglass, which is... All right. Is that like the pink stuff that you put in your attic? No. Insulation. Is that made of cotton candy? Maybe. How dirty is it? Like, you sweat in there, you can't dry clean that, so you're disgusting. I have a moisture management undersuit. A moisture management undersuit. Is it women's clothing? Yes. A moisture management undersuit? Yes. What are those ever used for? Other than triathlon people. Athletes like me. So you pee and poop in that thing? No, I make sure to go before I leave. 
so I don't have any problems when I get here. Do you poop Lego pieces? Uh, I don't know. And what we did learn last week about him, by the way, is that he also has a little bit of a foot fetish for the ladies. Oh, that's right. He likes that's ladies' that. feet. Do you like that porn star Brandy Bell? <laughs> I don't think we all know who porn stars are by name like you do, Iron Page. But Jenna Hayes. I love Jenna Hayes. Yeah, she's adorable. She's got nice feet. Oh, wow. Nice feet? Yes. Never looked at her feet before. Uh, yes, she did. You're lying. No. No, I'm more of a uh, vagina, boobs, and face kind of guy. Uh, People will call you a pervert. They're scared to say it. You like feet. No, feet are gross, man. That's oh, yeah. No, yeah. People call people like that a pervert for reasons. His feet are creepy. It's the dirtiest, yeah. weirdest part of somebody's body. I should have never body. admitted it. Now people think I'm a pervert. No, it's great. <laughs> People think you're the Iron Patriot, the ruler of American defenses. For someone who, who's so into moisture management, I wouldn't think feet would be your thing. Well, I like all parts of the, the woman's body. That's not the only thing I like. I mean, it's just a beautiful thing when you see the beautiful arch on a woman's foot and, and the toes all nice and straight. <laughs> if, I, a, if a girl's flat-footed, is that a turn-off? No, I don't like it. I don't like it. <laughs> You'll send her home? Um, if the face is real cute, maybe. But no, I don't, I, I don't know. It's just, that's it's a hard thing to get by, because the arch is so pretty. Don't you like the arch? Yeah. <laughs> Do you like the smell of a dirty foot, like, on a woman? No, dirty... I like it to be clean. I don't like it to be dirty. So it's not like dirty panties, when you smell dirty panties, where it kind of turns you on. Uh, no. Only dirty if it's mud wrestling. You're into mud wrestling? Yeah. Mud and feet. I'm jealous of you, Red Man, because you got to go to the Playboy Mansion this week. I always dreamed of skinny dipping in the grotto with the with the bunnies. Do you take good care of your feet? <laughs> you take good care of your feet too? Yeah, I try to clip them, clip them, and um, buff them up and everything. Do you involve feet when you're having sex? Like, do girls put feet in your butt or something? Uh, I don't know. I'll massage them during a good movie. Have you ever had a girl put her foot in your butt? No, I don't do the kinky stuff like that. You know, if you're doing a girl doggy style, she can sort of reach her heel around and put it in your ass. Oh, really? That's whatever. What do you like? <laughs> uh, I don't know. I'm pretty formal. I was I'm a Republican Jew, so nothing, nothing too crazy. Missionary. Lots of missionary. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we should probably... <laughs> I don't remember your uh, your jokes now. <laughs> yeah, I, mean, uh, I, I kind of remember. Okay, you did the one... I wouldn't do the one about your parents and that little Wayne thing. That's the most tired premise ever, that... We have this, and my parents had that. It's like so tired, especially using the music analogy. I just throw that away. <laughs> he has a nice personality. He seems like uh, get over on the audience. It also seems like you're pushing the weird thing too hard. At first glance, I don't think you're weird. You're like a smiley guy. So all of a sudden, when you're going into how weird you are, it's like you're forcing it on us. Because at first, everyone's like, "Well, you don't seem weird." And yeah, you started off with yeah, I'm creepy, but it seems like you're you like, want to be creepy for the yeah. joke. Yeah, you look, you seem very clean cut. Right, I'm pretty creepy. I'm pretty creepy. What's, well, then you got to so really creepy creepy like, here. What's the punchline again? What does it end up getting to? Uh, now I got to knock on the neighbor's door, but like, can you guys fuck a little bit louder? I'm trying to sleep around here. Maybe a lot of math to that. Dash. Yeah, I don't really know if that's creepy. Like, I mean, that's like. This guy fucks feet, like, you know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> <All right. laughs> and you're like, you have nothing even close to fuck feet fucking. Right. That's creepy. Otherwise, you might not actually be creepy. You might be saying you're creepy for a laugh. Unless that's where he wants to get eventually in that whole creep thing. I mean, that, if that's you. Yeah, yeah, do you want to be a creep? I don't want to be. I just naturally am sometimes. You think it's something you, can, something you can't suppress? Maybe it's not necessarily creepy. Maybe it's just like, I don't get played. I have dried come on LA. Me. You don't. There you go. Winner, winner, chicken dinner. Uh, hookers. I'm in between dry cum and iron sheet. Like a feet right now. This is kind of weird. That's not the iron sheet. The iron sheet's a different person. Also, <laughs> that guy next to you is both chic and he's iron. However, he's not the iron sheet. That's the iron patriot. World of difference between a guy from. Uh, uh, Iran and a guy who's defend who has an American star in the middle of his chest, right? And I don't wrestle. <laughs> 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 
That's true. This is an awkward. I think we're it really is. stoned today, aren't we? I, something's up. Some, something's definitely <laughs> wrong. I felt like I was going to pass out twice when I was listening to the Patriot talk about his feet obsession. Uh, Vinny, I, I love your style. You got a lot of confidence, man. At Vinny Fastline on Twitter. Take care, buddy. That's Vinny. F A S L I N E. If anybody was listening, there is something uh, weird. You have a tag for Vinny. What? There is something weird going on on today's episode. I feel kind of weird. Did you, like, spike us with something? I have no <laughs> idea what's going on. I love it, though. You guys feel it, too? Is there weird energy in the room? Yeah. It's the Twilight Zone. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, baby. All right, moving it along. Your next comedian is Justin Blake. At Anand is Justin Blake. Topic, myself. Uh, what's going on, guys? I uh, got some issues going on. First one is I live in LA without a car. It's a major issue. And because of that, I've gotten too skinny from all the walking I've had to do. I didn't realize how bad it got until I was talking to my friend about it. And he was like, yeah, you have gotten skinny. You like gay skinny. I said, gay skinny? And he had like a real explanation. He was like, yeah, like you're just so frail. Like you couldn't possibly be trying to attract a woman built like that. Like you're actually the opposite of what's attractive to women. Like, women see you and they get jealous. You're built, you're kind of built like a model. You were like 5'11", 120. Like, there are women in the gym right now trying to look like you. <laughs> there you go. That's great. That was excellent. Oh, yeah. Drop knowledge. I, I like that. Yeah. I thought it was good. Yeah. It seems like, uh, it, it seems like there's definitely something in, uh, that part where, um, at the end, I mean, there's definitely a tag there, and, uh, you know, if, that means that if you're, if there's women that are working out that hard to look like you, then, obity, obity, obity. <laughs> right, I see what you're saying. I, I thought like you were going to go to, to the, to the point where your friend wanted to fuck you. <laughs> I thought of it, but that wasn't it. I try to keep it 100. 100. I think you could also just defend your stance as a skinny person and put down fat people. Like, why am I gay for, like, I'm not fat, you know? Maybe right, that's right, just, right. there's a lot to go with that. I thought it was great. You, I even liked your information about riding the, not having a car in Los Angeles. There's a lot there, too. You just had a lot of really great, interesting information you could expand on almost everything you said. Awesome. Yeah. Bill. Bill. All right, Bill. Thanks. Thanks. That's a funny joke. You can even get to that quicker. The way to speak to that. But yeah. Jeff Richards is in the house. So many comics without cars. It really is true. And then the ones that do have cars all live in them. That part's true as well. I remember when Gerard didn't have a car, and now he takes an Uber everywhere. So, you know. Well, yeah, that, that's, that's how it works. Yeah. Uber's really, I mean, Uber is unbelievable. Yeah. Of, I mean, I, I know they're, it, they're getting it in most cities now, but if you don't know, it's cheaper than a taxi, literally, to take an Uber, especially an Uber X, which is like a Prius. Should so we if explain you're what a, an Uber is? You're a, I think we've talked about this before. You hit a button, and a car knows exactly where you are because of your map, and then they pull up to you. And they take you where you want to go. But don't use the other thing where the people have the mustache on the front of their cars. Yes. Because that's just fucking embarrassing. <laughs> you know, you're right. I actually take Lyft, which is the pink mustache one, and they make it all hippy dippy. They make it so you have to fist bump the driver, and, like your friends. Why, do you, you, why do you take that one when you have Uber on your phone? Because whenever, like, if it's closer, I'll just take that. You have because to sit in the front seat, you can't sit in the back. Why? Because you save, like, a couple hitch. bucks? <laughs> I save a couple bucks, and if it's closer. If it's between UberX and Lyft, I'll do the UberX. But if I just feel like moving and the Lyft is significantly closer, I'll do Lyft. Wow. Look at you. <laughs> I never would have guessed you as that guy. I would have totally assumed you would wait the extra time, and wait and spend the extra couple bucks and be Uber all the way. Hey, when Benji I'm like, comes from go. vast sums of money, by I the don't. way. I'm just like a Jew from Beverly Hills. It's not like I'm special. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anybody that's not from Beverly Hills and not Jewish, you can't imagine how nice it is. No, maybe they're... I'm not, but I know what's going on over there. You see, you hear that a lot, and I think it's just that there's a lot of poor people. So if you're not poor, poor people think you're rich. But I'm not rich, I'm just not poor. See what I'm saying? 
It feels you're like I'm rich to you guys because you're poor. <laughs> I, said, I said, first of all, I said you come from money. I didn't say you're rich. I said you come from money. You go, no, no, I'm a Beverly Hills chill. But, I mean, you know, you, I don't you come had from a different poverty. upcoming. From you were people. raised by a maid. Yeah. That's the sign. Okay, that's there you the, go. That's the number and one. And by round of applause, how many of you were raised by a maid because your parents were so rich they could actually afford one? I was, years? but my mom was a maid. Really? You, you have rich parents? Yeah. Holy shit. I love, I love people with rich parents. It's just always a fun conversation to know what that shit's like. Make it uncomfortable if you want to. It's not my fault your parents are losers. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I fucking love about Benji. It's the best. Do you buy your own toilet paper, Benji? Um, I'll actually put it in order with my mom, and my mom will buy it for me. <clears throat> but technically, my mom's assistant. Laugh, there you go. <laughs> Insert laugh. Helene buys my toilet paper at Smart and Final. And then I pick it up from the Flawless Equities. Guess who's talking about Hollywood, everybody? It's Jake Marin at Jake Marin One on Twitter. Thank you, Tony. Oh, hey, everybody. So I love Hollywood because it seems like every race out here acts like another race. You get a lot of black guys who dress like white nerds. A whole lot of white nerds wear gold chains and snapback hats. And Italian food is only cooked by Mexicans. It's diversity, right? Uh, I hate those rappers, though, on Hollywood Boulevard. They come up to you, and they give you a free CD, and they ask for $20. It's pretty scandalous. But sometimes karma comes back on these guys. The other day, two of these rappers got in a fight. Their names were Purple Reggae and Swag Nation. <laughs> yeah, got in a brutal fist fight, and the cops were called. They were both arrested. But I know what you guys are wondering. You're wondering, Jake, who won this fight? And I think it's pretty obvious. Society. That's, that's it. Even the microphone gave you a thumbs down after that. Uh, uh, no, I, we will. All right. I'll start off by saying this. You can't do a Mexican cooking show. I was gonna say the same sorry, to, sorry to break the news to you, man. It's just, that is just one that is just, I mean, that can't be what you get at. Right, Jeff? Yeah. I. What? <laughs> Wait a second, is your real name Jeff, you son of a bitch? No. You caught me off guard because my real name is Jeff. Epic moment. Oh my god, that's great. That was awesome. You gotta be fucking kidding me. The Iron Jeff. <laughs> yeah. Boy, you really blew it on that one, man. Now we, we all. The Iron Jeff now? <laughs> the Iron Jeff. And we like on Facebook, you know. <laughs> Well, yeah, well, well, I know. I was playing along with it there, buddy. Anyway, thank you. <laughs> what was the next thing? What, are you going to blow the whole show? Come on, man. He said, you go to an Italian restaurant and everyone cooking is Mexican. Yeah, you can't do that. Yeah, yeah. yeah they'll get down So on stupid. Yeah. It's just true, also. Well, it's like, that's what, yeah. that's like what 80 year old guys have been saying for the last 30 years. Right. It's like, there's no reason to say it. It's like, and you're doing like the nice guy thing. There's no reason. If I tell tons of racist jokes, you're like a nice white guy. Just do the nice white guy thing. There's no point making fun of Mexicans. It's all I got, but you don't need it. And then the second premise, where you're talking about, uh, you know, the two rappers coming up to you, or whatever, about being annoyed at rappers, like, like, uh, 20 bucks a CD or whatever, you know what I mean? But definitely, I mean, you say the names of the two rappers, like it's gonna come back to mean something in the end. Okay, yeah. But it doesn't, it doesn't yet, mean. at least. And I thought you were totally going to take that somewhere else. Like I thought you were going to be like, because they're they're giving away their CDs, or there was some reason. Like when they got in a fight, there was some other kind of outcome because of that, you know? Because they're not real rappers yet, or whatever. That there was some kind of like, yeah, reason that you. And when you go to a misdirect in the end yeah. of so, all that build up, and when we're waiting yeah. that there's a chance we could hear Swag Nation or Purple Reggae again, all of a sudden it's it goes to society. Like, it, it just seems like something funnier is coming. It feels like you're trying to be smart. Right. You're like, I'm going to blame society, and that's the big joke, everybody. And it wasn't that funny. There wasn't a good payoff. Right. right. The joke before, the guy before, yeah. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Iron Man. Thanks. Thanks. Thanks, Jeff. Iron um, Jeff. Jeff. <laughs> Jeffrey, um, a guy in a banged up plastic suit doesn't make our critique sound any better, right? Yeah, I know. It's easy to criticize. It's easy for me to sit back. I mean, you guys have a lot of guts to get up here. 
<laughs> Fucking love this guy. Uh, Jeff Richards. Yeah, I mean, I think you like engage the audience. You're a nice guy, and you, you know, they want to like you. It's just like you know, keep working on the material, and you'll get there. Sounds good. Thanks. <laughs> Jeff stole my coffee. This Jeff stole my coffee before the show. I gave it. Yeah, you know, I noticed that. You wouldn't, you wouldn't think so. It seems like, what, would you have Ambien in your coffee, Ben? I'm because... an adult, and he stole my coffee, and he went like a bully. <laughs> For real? I think it's a dominance thing, because he's like, I'm a big star. Well, it's also, SNL, like, I, I look at I it like a joke. joke. It's kind of a joke. Yeah, it's like, kind of a joke. But you you, can, you can't pull it's that shit off thing. without, like... R amazing TV credits. <laughs> it's a dumbass. There's nobody that grabs somebody else and is like, hey, I just got this, uh, I mean, I remember you said, what, a skinny vanilla latte, yeah. right? So I and that sounds vanilla. like the type of drink that if you're like, hey, you want a sip of this? Like, it seems like somebody with power, only somebody with power, it can't be a fucking, you know, I mean, I mean either it's somebody with power or it's like a homeless guy that like needs it for nourishment. I also offered to share it with him, and then he and I did it. share. Right. You did no, share it with no. him. You shared. I gave you part of it back at the end. The last <laughs> <laughs> backwash. See, you can't do I that. Give you some foam. It's a dominance. I'll get you totally. back. Totally, and it will you empower me. Then. And it makes sense. That's what you work hard to get on SNL for. So Once you, you get on people. SNL, you can fucking take somebody's coffee. Yeah, man. Absolutely. Guess what? Hey. What? You get to say a guy on SNL took your coffee. Fuck oh, that. When I first got it, happened to me, I would itch my butthole, make it really smelly, and then put it on Jeff's face. Well, there you go. <laughs> yeah, but you're part of the Rogan camp. <laughs> you can do whatever you want. I would have done that. You're no untouchable. Way. Well, whatever, dude. Rogan versus SNL live comedy battle. You touch my coffee, I don't care who you are. I'd probably do something about it. That's true. I'm going to try. <laughs> But he, yeah. he probably didn't know that he could do it to you, Benji. I used to bark right? for this guy when he shows him, you know, and now this is the pit, this is what I got. Benji, you gotta do something. You gotta stick up for yourself. What am I supposed to do? He's bigger than me, he's stronger than me. So what, he's not gonna fight you. If he would have resisted a little bit more, I would have probably given it back. But he didn't resist at all. I did. I fought you ran away and I chased you. Yeah, but you didn't chase me that well. I mean, I went into the back. I was in the back the whole time. You're like much, you can box me out, really. Like, I really tried box. to get it back. I don't know if I'm going to box you out. He was turning his back, I let, uh, and he turned his back. Your back's like a wall to me. That's why wiping butthole be on back still horrible. He'd hit me if I did that. If so what? The I don't your coffee. Get hit. He's not going to hit you if you have a fucking stinky asshole hand. I've never been hit. I don't want to get hit. <laughs> Never been hit. Lots of threats. Nobody ever hits me. <laughs> Fucking love Benji. I mean, he is the ultimate, ultimate great bad guy. He's like the Christoph Waltz. Of, and like, you know what? That partly is why you took your coffee. Because I'm a bad guy. You come from such a rich family. <laughs> <laughs> I went really well. That's probably the essence of it. If you had less money, I wouldn't take your coffee. Because since you didn't know what it was like to have no coffee then, now you get to know what it's like to have no coffee just after you bought a coffee. It was so painful because you know you're like three sips into your latte and you're like, yeah, just getting going, vibing, vibing, bam, he steals it. If I had just a few more sips, I would have gotten a little more out of what I You had a little, he had a latte. <laughs> your next comedian, you like that segue there? How I grabbed the paper, did it, and then, all right. Put your hands together for Ari Manis, everybody. Add Ari Manis. Let's <laughs> talk about hanging out. I like it. You just got like a, a warm woo from the crowd. It's my favorite amongst the comedians. Oh God, thank you, guys. I don't know about that. You're very handsome, sir. You must get a lot of ladies in your life. I live alone. I am lonely. A girl called me last night, though. Real female. Called me last night, 11 o'clock. She said, hey, I'm kind of tired. But if you want to come over and hang out for a little bit, that'd be cool. And I was like, oh, okay, I know what that means. I'll come over and hang out for a little bit, right? Turns out she just wanted to hang out for a little bit. <laughs> Doesn't she realize I have a penis? What a dumb bitch asking me to hang out for a little bit. Fuck her, dude. I just got a girl's number from doing stand-up comedy for the first time. Moving on. Got a girl's number. Yeah, pretty cool. Added her on Facebook. Turns out she's in high school. Yeah. She sent me a message, she's like, hey, you're really funny. So I went back, I'm like, yeah, you're really young. Turns out she's 18, though, so I'm going to bang her out. Yeah. 
All right, that's it. <laughs> well, you got your biggest laugh on it. All right, that's it. Um, your second biggest laugh was a fist bump to the Patriot. Um, all right. Okay. What did you guys did? Did the girl actually hang out with you? Did that actually happen? That happened. Uh, what did you guys girl? actually do? She called me over 11 o'clock at night on Valentine's Day, actually. So that would have been a day of reference. And uh, we hung out, and that was all we did. And she's single too. She was single. Wait a second. You, did you try anything? Was she supposed to just like <laughs> fucking put your hand right on I your dick? I wasn't getting good signals. Signal. I was getting good signals. Well, let's talk about what really happened, and let's find out where the punchline yeah, is. Maybe you because it can't miserable. end on you just calling her a dumb bitch. By the way. <laughs> <laughs> That's not exactly what we would call in the writer's guild, uh, well-written. Um, blankety blank, bad person, dumb yeah, bitch. Should be your fault. It probably was my fault from the end. Let's talk about what happened. What happened? So, Take us through the na- magical okay. Valentine's Day night in which a single chick hits you meet, up meet and this girl. wants to hang out and nothing ends up happening. I meet this girl at a show, actually. What, do you just have corn dogs I in your freezer or something? Like I stalk her online. Turns out she's in Playboy. Super hot. Found naked pictures of her. So I hit her up. Said, hey, you want to hang out? How's, wait, back. how did you hit her up? She gave yeah, you... I, yeah, I got her number. How? Uh, I just asked for it. On Facebook? No, no, in real life. After the show. And uh, oh. so then... And, on, and you were already stalking her or you started stalking her after you got her number? After I got her number, I stalked her. Where was Where the show at? Yeah, yeah. Where was the show at? Hooters. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. Yeah. Was she working there? No, did not work there, just the audience member. She was drunk. Oh, no shit. Yeah. yeah. So then. The fact that you were even close enough to her to ask for her number, I know she was wasted. She was wasted, not gonna lie. All right. So Valentine's then all of a sudden, day. see, this is, this. there's no doubt that this is the actual premise of the joke. Right? Yeah. And I mean, a, a chick that you, She's did, a play- you did a show in play- Hooters, or else because it, it seems, yeah. Now the stakes are raised before she even gets there, not to mention it's Valentine's Day, you're both single. Yeah. I mean, now did you there's shit to it. Now it's oh, yeah, it. did you get her drunk? She's an you alcoholic. You gotta bring her drunk. Inviting you over on we Valentine's. Smoked weed. We smoked weed. You fucking idiot. <laughs> you met her drunk oh, and you man. got her number. What makes? Why, why bring weed into the situation? Weed you bring her weed drunk weed. and mount her. I'm not good with women. <laughs> well, one, no, no, no. one thing is don't <laughs> smoke weed with them. Drink yeah. with them. I think we found the dumb bitch, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Benji Aflalo. Wow. No, I mean, but what's great is that... Okay, so... Isn't it okay. funny how a nerdy guy's frustration, he tries to blame the woman, and, and she couldn't be any, any easier to fuck. A drunk girl from I already know. invites you over and you bring weed. That was it. And then you don't get fucked and you call her the dumb bitch. I love what's That's going so on funny. here. You're about to get your punchline right now. I just okay. know it. Okay? Because after... So she comes over. Because I know, I know what it's like to be a... You know, I'm a, awkward. A, a struggling a comedian. Well, actually, yeah. you came from money, is what we just sent out. Do you still have yeah. money? No, no, very poor. Oh, right. Okay. So then, when you're right. So that's why you didn't have. My parents don't give me money. That's yeah. probably why you didn't have alcohol, though, right? Mm, no. I could say yeah, but no, it's just because I didn't bring alcohol. I'm an idiot. Okay. Oh, you always bring alcohol no. and a tequila. Yeah. Hang on. Okay. So that's my. Oh, so well, here's my well, question. Well, I don't know about tequila. That's kind of. Dangerous. But one works for you, it just for yours. That was tequila on that night, and that was fucking... That's how he said that. But I guess you learned a lesson. And I guess you could make the whole joke about how you thought she was a dumb bitch, and then you walked yourself back yeah, through it, and you discovered that you were a dumb bitch. Maybe that I, like that. Oh, I like that. I like that. I like that. Yeah, now I have to rework it. Good feedback. Definitely. Thank you. And get Definitely. laid next time, man. Just yeah, one more question. One true. more question. Because I know how this normally goes. She was hanging out with, for a couple hours, right? Yeah, a couple hours. At your place. Her place. Your place. Her place. Her place. Oh, it was her place. Yeah, she, uh, and this was at night. Place. What were the, what was the time? Valentine's. Valentine's Day, 11 p.m. 11 p.m. to 1 p.m. Ah! was your shift? Yeah. Why did you get her number? Oh, my God. Oh, man. <laughs> did I broadcast it on the podcast? You are broadcasting. <laughs> <laughs> can, can we get her number? After the podcast, I'll give you guys her number. No, no you got to try oh, again, saying, man. I did. I yeah. took her rock climbing and nothing happened. Well, no, rock, rock climbing? <laughs> <laughs> you want to go hot air balloon? <laughs> Take this fake sword and go kill yourself. Right? 
<laughs> you know how hard it is to get a girl's pants off when you have all that fucking rock climbing gear on? <laughs> and by the way... You will just chop your own dick off. I should've. And by the way, that's another part of the joke. This this shit is unbelievable. The real shit is crazy. Yeah, you gotta do the real shit. You're watching too much stand-up comedy, man, because yeah. you're trying to you're turning this amazing stuff that is your life into this stuff that like everybody's. It just you know what I mean. Yeah. You, you gotta be real, dude. Because rock a... climbing after we find out all that other shit, that's the worst possible fucking date ever. That's craziness. I can't think of anything worse because it's the least fun. Like at least like whitewater rafting or skydiving. Like it's like hey, we had an adrenaline rush for a bit. That's just fucking like painfully dangerous. <laughs> you have a better chance of getting laid bringing a better looking richer guy's cock. <laughs> I mean, what are you gonna do? Get all sweaty and then you she's gonna be horny because she knows she smells like shit. She just well, like I was belaying her, her on the rope. It's like I had her life in my hands. I thought yeah. it didn't work. <laughs> it will probably work now though if you invite her to go to a bar or her, your house or something yeah. like that. Just stock up with a bunch of liquor. Yeah. Maybe have dinner before and get a bottle of wine. And then have like a, a shot, like, hey, it's good to see you. Like, mix it in early. Yeah. Then yeah. have alcohol waiting at home for, and have a reason why you're going back to your house. Like, like you yeah. have to, it's, it's all about right, yeah. alcohol and house. Unless you're going <laughs> to leave, leave the carabiners at home. <laughs> Unless you're going to rape and kill her, you don't go rock climbing. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you do. Yeah. You chop her head off. <laughs> make tacos at your house. Turkey tacos if she's on a diet. Make margaritas. Make the margaritas strong as fuck. Start off you with a margarita before, before you yeah. start. And then go wine and cheese. Wine. You go to Whole Foods, Trader Joe's, get some good wine and cheese. Wine's yeah. too slow. Yeah, we're shots. <laughs> This, this podcast fan will love advice. I love it. I'm gonna use it all too. Yeah, get laid, bro. Are you, Thank you. Done? Is this thing dead? Like, can you call her? No, I, yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna call is her. Is she hot or is she one of the? Oh, dude, she's hot. Show you pictures later. Wow, this is painful for you. It's very painful. Oh. All right, do not give out her number or her name to anybody. I have yeah. one more chance to try this. All right, then I'll do it. After and you need to come back here and let us know what happened. We'll do. All and right? get on top. Just try to get on top of her. Just, no, get just drunk and then just you want to get drunk and that. just jump on. That's Actually, like, yeah. Man, up. man up! In the end, I have to man up. Yeah, there he is, right. Ari Manitz. Yeah. That's at Ari Manitz on Twitter, right, Ari? Sure. Yeah, he's definitely to it. Manitz, M-A-N-N-I-S. You want to tweet at him at some point about his yeah. new material? And I don't know how Jew you are, but maybe don't eat because, you know, I know after I eat, I can't fuck really. That's might make a turkey taco. Make it small. Small tacos. Yeah, so you don't want to overeat and then be like, yeah, I got lactose intolerance, I gotta go. Right. Yeah. Just booze. Instead of sour cream, use like a yogurt, not fat yogurt. Was rock climbing your idea? Yeah. Of course. What the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> she likes fucking, bro. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, she likes getting liquored up and having sex. Not rock climbing. She totally thought you were going to get her liquored up after that, by the yes. way. She's a dirty girl that wants to be fucked, man. You just fucked up. Yeah, I mean, 11 o'clock. <laughs> I can't let it go. 11 o'clock to 1 a.m. is, I mean, on, on Valentine's, Valentine's Day. Day. She doesn't she just want to talk. And Playboy's the big thing, man. Yeah, and she gets drunk at Hooters and watches comedy shows there. What an idiot. <laughs> are, are you really good at rock climbing and you wanted to impress her? <laughs> <laughs> Great fucking question, man. A million dollar question from the Iron Patriots. Later, yeah. <laughs> so on the head. I can't believe none of us asked that. It, that great one. Ari, is that the case? Part of it, yeah. I want to show off a little bit. Wow. Holy shit. You're like that guy that takes a girl to the skating rink and like starts skating backwards in front of her and shit. Like, hey, what's up? And she's like totally struggling and like, I can't do this at all. Help me. <laughs> I think I'm going to die. Yeah, don't I look cool, baby? Yeah. Whoa. Hey, I'm shooting the duck. All right. It's an old roller skating move. At Father Flanagan on Twitter, his name is Ricardo Flanagan, everybody. Oh, snap. Talk about racism. How you doing? What's up? Uh, man, I'm getting tired of like, all the fake outrage about Paula Dean, like saying the N-word. Like, 
really doesn't matter. I mean, like, Paula Dean, like, fried chicken, has thick thighs and diabetes. She pretty much is a black woman. <laughs> It's not a bit like you, you you sit up and say, Oh, I would never say that anywhere. Like, that doesn't mean you're not racist. Like, how many black people have you had over your house for dinner this year? Probably none. You know? It's like you, some people would kiss a stray dog, like tongue kiss a stray dog in the mouth. It's just, oh, oh yeah, oh, good boy, good boy. Go kiss that stray Negro in the mouth. Nah, come on now. I got standards. I can't. Probably got herpes on his lips or something. I don't know. It's, it's just like racism is, I don't know. You got the right to be whatever you want to be, you know what I'm saying? Like, it really doesn't matter, because at the end of the day, it's not like you do anything significant. Like, if, if you want your opinion on race to count, like, you gotta do something significant, like save a baby or something like that. Like, you gotta be, like, it has to be a job. You should be like a, a person who saves people. Like, if, if I asked you what your day consisted of, you say, oh, well, I woke up, took a shower, I walked outside, and there was a baby on the ground. It's like, you kitty cat meow, which means you've hit 60 seconds. Um, Fuck yeah. Jeff Richards, what do you think about Ricard what Ricardo just had to say? And how long have you been black? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Um how long have you been doing it? Uh about four years. Okay. No, I mean you got good pace, you know, I think uh the first the first joke was good. I like the first joke a lot. Um I think you're you're I'd like to see you get more animated, maybe. Just to kind of bring it up. Do you smoke pot? No. Okay. You might want to, might want to do that. <laughs> uh, Have you ever smoked pot? Yeah. Oh, yeah. How come you don't anymore? Uh, I mean, it's not like something I do regularly. It's, if it's around, I do it, you know. Not like you can't I'm afford pot. I can afford it. I can go. <laughs> what do you do? What do you do as your job? Or just your regular job? Your regular job? Yeah, I work at a call center, a notary call center. What's that? It's like people call in that want to be notaries, so they call in to try to get instructions on what, like, to buy bond insurance, or like get instructions on what they should do in their state, what the rules are. Yeah. Right, you help you people notarize. Yeah, I, well, I, I help them get a, like insurance and stuff. They have to take the test and get the training on their own. You, do you ever encounter any funny characters in that? Well, I just started, so I really got a chance to like see what it's really about. I mean, I could imagine anybody who wants to be a notary being a normal person or, you know. Probably a pretty boring person. Yeah, I, don't, I think that's full of characters, pretty much. Yeah, maybe you can explore that a little bit. Right. Like, I mean, get the, the real like, stuff, I think, you know, like what you're really going through and what your life's really like. Yeah. Tap into that. More. Definitely the fact that people, like, are still becoming notaries. I mean, there's something very bizarre in that. Yeah. It yeah. seems like that, that, that's that got to be, like... <laughs> Like being a milkman or something like that's got to be on its way out. No, <laughs> it's pretty important to know. Really? Yeah, yeah. actually, they, you can become like a, a signing agent where you oversee loans. And but it's pretty much like a scam, that. right? I mean, pretty much. No, you're, 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 no. You go somewhere just, and you look at the guy and then he signs his name. Yeah, and a retard could be a notary. It can be a scam. A retard could yeah. be a notary. It could be an app. Yeah, 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 pretty much. Not a full. It's not a scam. It's like an app. Sometimes contracts and stuff. No, but I mean, as far as a job. Am I being too Jewy here? It's important. Well, I mean, you would be the one that would say that notaries are important because you are so Jewy. But for like half my comedy career, my mom was telling me to become a notary. Why? Because they're Jewy. I'm like, well, you know, you could get your notary, blah blah. And what does do it even do? Is it like a good paying job or something? No, you can just charge people a fee per contract that you oversee. How much is a fee? It seems like it wouldn't be worth it. And you're not a notary. You do what in that? You need notaries. I, the notaries. I basically yeah. just feel the call. Like I let them know what. Yeah, the rules and regulations are the procedure to become a notary. And like, uh, Can you give us like a couple lines of something that you say on a daily basis into the phone? <laughs> uh, <laughs> I was, uh, well, I see you don't have bond insurance. You might want to get that before it expires. We got like until October 14th, of 2014. Get that shit done. <laughs> get that shit done. I love that. <laughs> wow, people must laugh pretty hard in the phone when. Uh, yeah. Yeah, you got till October 14, 2014 to get that shit done. Yeah. I wish my people that I had to call talk like that. They're always so boring. Um, You're looking at me like... like I'm trying to think. I'm trying to imagine you there and what that's like. Jeff, what would you do if if all of a sudden you had like the body and the look of Ricardo Flanagan? What's something you would uh, talk about like physically? About your physical? Just tell people to get the fuck out of my way. <laughs> I, they're, Low they're, energy black guy is huge in comedy. Yeah, right now. totally. 
Totally. Yeah. Totally. You're like, but amp it up. You can amp it up. If you, do you like doing characters or do you? I can. Yeah, I can do impressions on it. Shit, whatever. Let's see one of your impressions. Yeah, let's, let's do it. Let's see it. Hey, one, one, one of the best impressionists in the world, Jeff Richards, wants to see him do an impression. What impression are you going to do for him? Uh, well, I guess a cliche one would be Obama. I guess. Don't do a cliche one. Do like the most inventive one. Inventive? Do like a Forrest Whitaker or something? No. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea. How to do that. I guess it'd just be the standard people like him or Cosby or. People I watch and see you on a regular basis. What about a white? If you can get a white guy down. Yeah, what's well, your white guy? Let's hear your white guy. A white guy voice. That's pretty much standard. That's just, if you, I don't know, you ask somebody, oh, I'm, I'm fine. How are you today? <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Why don't you do the whole, do your whole act like so whole, oh my uh, god, yeah. Talk uh, about being a notary like a white guy. Why don't you start, oh start <laughs> trying to fit into the notary <laughs> for your job? Yeah. You're a guy explaining why he's going to notary in your wife. <laughs> well, uh, of course I want to be a notary. I mean, who doesn't want to officialize a document? I mean, I could possibly <laughs> make money as a signing agent. I don't see a loan. Or, uh, maybe you the thing you did before, morning. you said you got to get your bond by the 15th. Take it, white, white it up to a 10. I really want to see you. White it up to a 10. White it up. <laughs> well, uh, sir, uh, you're going to have to get your bond insurance renewed uh, by the 14th of October, or that shit's going to expire. <laughs> He's making a white face for the audience. <laughs> I guess that's not He's white. making duck face. I guess that's how black people think white people are. Yeah, that's, duck face. Well, that's like this. I don't know. Yeah, that's how white people are. Some, some of them. Some of them just standard people. Just. <laughs> Yeah, some of them are okay. Yeah, some of them cool. You know? I, I know plenty of cool white people. You seem like pretty decent white people. Um, that is your new opening line. Yeah. One of my favorite questions that I that I that I sort of like to keep a part of each episode in a tradition is I always ask a black comic uh, each episode, and I'll ask you this time. Why is it if you had to speak on behalf of all black people, why they call people who are light skinned uh, light skinned with two D's like that. Light skinned. Yeah. If you had to actually like be the ambassador of all black people and answer the question, why do they say that like that? What would your response be? Because they have poor grammar. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much the reason. That's, it's not a black thing at all. It's just a person who does not speak. Right? I fucking love you, man. That's at Father Flanagan on Twitter. Father Flanagan, or Carlo Flanagan. Funny dude. Nice to meet you, man. Whoa, this guy's actually a producer on this show. He always helps out, sets things up, and uh, helps us throughout the show. And he's actually going to go up. He's at Josh Martin Comic. His name's Josh Martin. He's talking about dick pills. That guy knows about dick pills. Um... Yeah, uh, I have a friend of mine, uh, he takes a crazy amount of dick pills. Crazy amount. And I went to him, I'm like, why do you take so many dick pills? It's like, it gives me confidence in the bedroom. Which tells me I will never need dick pills. Because I don't need confidence in the bedroom if all I'm doing is eating a sandwich. There's no need. Let me eat a sandwich like a man and cry. Okay, I'm watching this porno. I don't need dick pills. That's, that's all. That's all. That's, that's, all, that's all I want to do. That's funny. That's I like that. Short that's good. Good. It's better to be shorter than longer. There's nowhere else for the joke to go. I right. Think it's good. Right. Well, I, I just. I feel like it's missing something. Why don't you say it's better? So why do I need confidence? And I don't need confidence in the bedroom because I live in my car. I, I don't live in my car anymore. <laughs> right. I moved out of the car. I have well, a great. You, well, you also don't. You still don't have a bedroom though. So it's, I, mean, I have an air mattress in a living room. Well, yeah. That, that's that's all I... Yeah, well, that's better yet. I don't need confidence in the bedroom because all I have is oh an God. air mattress in the living room. <laughs> <laughs> what do I need confidence in the bedroom I don't have for if all that I have is an air mattress? I, I don't need confidence in the bedroom. That's why I fuck children. Something like that. <laughs> <laughs> Keep your confidence up. They don't know what they're doing. <laughs> What a fucking rookie. What are you, seven years old? Yes, I am. I, I feel great right now. <laughs> um, yeah, um, 
You'll never hear that. That makes sense. Um, yeah, it just it felt like there was something missing. In the I mean, yeah, it is what it yeah, is. Yeah, you already said that. And then we said a bunch of stuff that was funnier than the joke. <laughs> that you really should have been paying attention I, to. I was. <laughs> I heard Red Brand reference dick pills. Is, is that Viagra? Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> no, the over-the-counter kind. Yeah, the kind of something up. Gas yes, the yep. Earl Skakel section. It's a common thing with new uh, co comedians. The I don't get laid or I suck at sex. Like right. I still do that, and I've been doing comedy a while. But like, is there the right way to do it and the wrong way to do it? What do you guys think? You just look like this, and then you get no sex. Yeah, but you see how there's, that doesn't go any go anywhere. It feels sometimes it's like, and then what? I don't know. It's not always about the look. I mean, Ari Manis takes girls rock climbing. <laughs> hey, let's, let's be honest. Like, can, Josh, can we be honest right now? Because you make yourself look like this. You put like the hair like this, and you put the glasses on like white. You don't wear contact lenses. You wear really short, tight shirts right. with cupcakes I mean, on it. You could look like a normal person if yeah. you wanted to. Yeah. You're, it takes you longer to get ready than it takes the Iron Patriot, for Christ's sakes. <laughs> And neither one of you can sit down. It's got skinny jeans, everybody. Uh, and I know you rock it, man. I know you go home and you just fucking have tons of bitches. Right. I know yeah. that's your whole thing. That air mattress is just like one of those children's fun houses. <laughs> Bouncy house. <laughs> what, what if we found out, because he he's he been living in his car for a long time and he just got a place, but what if we found out he just like rented out a garage and he pulls his car into the garage and the door shuts and he sleeps in his car? Right. <laughs> Another thing I was thinking is if they didn't buy a couch already, that he would... That he would have no choice but to take the back seat out of his car and have, <laughs> and then have to put that in the middle of the living room, and then he's still sleeping on the back seat. Which, by the way, funny story. One night, uh, to me, to him, sleep. and Brian Moses going to do a gig in Pasadena with Brian Redman, and uh, Josh is driving us, and our friend is sitting in the back seat of the car, right where Josh kept his head at night to sleep. And he, we were getting off the freeway, and all of a sudden he goes, we're all laughing. And he goes, my God, man, I got to pee. And we're like, all right, man. And then we, we start to pull over. The first, I mean, first thing, he's like, oh, man, big trouble, big trouble, big trouble. <laughs> and we're like, what? He's like, uh, I'm peeing, and I can't stop, and I am just filling your back seat right now. <laughs> so that's the kind of stuff Josh was dealing with just a month ago. Now he has his, a new place and new tags to that big post <laughs> It's at Josh Martin Comic, everybody, on Twitter. Good employee here at the Comedy Store. Oh Good, Good guy. Good Woo! new show. It's all happening. Oh, finally some estrogen in this party. Put your hands together for this funny young rising talent. It's at Kelly Landry, talking about anxiety. <laughs> Kelly Landry. Thanks, you guys. All right, uh, there's a lot of uh, athletes coming out of the closet these days, ever since Jason Collins came out last month. But since Jason Collins was first, everyone's calling him a hero. Now, Jason Collins is a hero. Jason Collins is seven feet tall, 280 pounds. I think the real hero is whoever's taking that big black <laughs> cock. <laughs> Speaking of, um, I was talking up with this guy the other night. <laughs> Not Jason Collins, obviously. Um, but you know, I was talking with this guy, really give him the good sex, you know? <laughs> it's just like really trying to wear him out. So he would fall asleep and I could take a shit. I'm serious, I have bathroom anxiety. But I know that I'm not alone. Does anybody else go to the bathroom and turn on the water so your date isn't going to pee? Yes, yeah. yes, I know. You do that. Cause why do we do that? Because now instead of sounding like you're peeing, it just sounds like you're peeing really hard. Right? And I don't know why we do it. Do I like think rationally in my head that guys in the locker room being like, I've got the best girlfriend, she never pees. She just goes to the bathroom, shuts the door, and obsessively washes her hands five times a night. Thank you very much, guys. Gotcha, yeah. Um, I think there's something in like pooping too. I think you can follow that up with, and, and you don't want to hear of them poop. Like, what else would you do? So Blow dry you your know. hair after eating Mexican food or something like that. Like something louder than a sink. Like, why? Why is she always? Uh, why is she always vacuuming the bathroom after we eat a lot of the? Uh... Where are you guys at? Or, or, no. Blending juices. Yeah. You, you just happen to have your juicer in your bathroom. Juicer in the bathroom. I want to hear a woman shit. It means like she's comfortable with me, you know? Right. I'm never, never, never. It's, that's intimacy. You know? Oh, I, I heard her shit. That means she, she's cool. She likes me. Man, Benji, you're so weirdly neurotic sometimes, and then other times you're like, I don't give a fuck. I never. Like, you, like you'll shit. listen to a girl shit, but you won't. You'll like. 
She would have to have like her own bathroom. Like you won't use the same toilet as her afterwards. No, I will. I will. I've never heard a girl shit, and every girl dumps me. So I want to hear a girl shit because maybe <laughs> you want to so hear a girl dump dinner. her. Right? No, so it might be. You want to you want to hear That's her progress. dump before she dumps you. <laughs> <laughs> That's how that goes. Dump fest, everybody. Jeff, have you ever heard a girl uh, take a poopy before? <laughs> I haven't heard it. Have you smelled it? it. <laughs> That's the word. You gotta keep the matches in the bathroom. <laughs> You need, yeah, you need to do something because I, I have this problem where my bathroom is like right, I only have one bathroom and it's just, there's the fans barely make some noise, my water pressure sucks, and so you just hear like every little fart and everything, little bit echoes and stuff. So I do try to turn the water, but I also have to like, like accidentally knock stuff off like the bathtub. Like 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 shampoo <laughs> bottles when I know something big's gonna come. Okay, clink 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 noises. It always I do things like that sometimes, and it always ends up going like off beat. You know what I mean? Like you'll, be, you'll hear the shampoo bottle drop, and then it's just like you know what I mean, like uncontrollable blatant splashing diarrhea. And so, and then I ran out of uh, the fragrance lately, so I've been trying to use soap. Wait, wait, wait what do you mean by the oh, fragrance? Like, like, it's like, like what's that thing? Like a little Lysol thing. So I oh. I, I tried to put like soap on a towel. And then like spin it like a wet towel <laughs> and try to make like a, a, a fan <laughs> and that didn't work. And so now I just take I no way that didn't work. Soap in a towel to spin. <laughs> oh my god! He comes out of shit. He's all sweaty and shit. Things right. smell like duty. All right. All right. I think you go the opposite way. <laughs> he opens the door and just sweats. Smells so. like shitty sweaty. <laughs> He's swinging this up, opens the door, Chick's just like, Oh my god, did you take a shit? <laughs> just immediately. Oh, uh, no. I why why is there soap in the towel? Go I on. think it's better if you go the opposite way and just submerge the whole uh, effect and, and maybe put a microphone in there. Do you yeah, like we'll an impression of me? So, no, just to put a microphone near the toilet and just go for it and then... See if he sticks around? It's you, 100% you coming out. Right. <laughs> I would appreciate that. I'm a perfect little lady. Eat the shit off my ass. And that would be... Like that. Oh. I don't know. That would be funny if you had a mic, like you said, you but there's like enough. speakers like in That's the other room That's and saying. the other person doesn't know. Well, it's not just a mic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, you know what else there should be? There should be one it's of those... Concert. You know a shit what? concert. What else you could have if you're going to have the speaker system hooked up to the bathroom is you could also have one of those 3D molding machine things that are coming out and whatever you dump into the toilet, that comes out of the other side so he has like souvenir turds leave it as a souvenir instead of undies like leave the, leave yeah. the I have a friend who was dating this girl and somehow her underwear ended up in his laundry and he saw skid marks in her oh, underwear that's, that's not have you seen the blood skid marks like the period underwear <laughs> shit looks like fucking somebody died yeah. period panties that's what they call them yeah Pyramid. Uh, P- period, not pyramid panties. That's you know what the best way to get the stains out of the underwear is like that? Mm. You just take a bar of soap and you put it in them and you switch it. <laughs> <laughs> Your next comedian, everybody. Oh, thanks, Kelly Landry. Yeah, That's at Kelly Landry on Twitter. Woo! Thank you. Hey. It's a it's a women's world. Put your hands together for Dana Moon talking about ghost hunter. It's Dana, Dana Moon being on Twitter. I want to listen to her shit. Jesus, find a holic here. Hell oh, yeah. Were you shitting? Where were you? I was right up there. Okay. Uh, does this count as my minute? Start it now. Wait. So okay. I kind of have a weird dating history. Um, I once dated a ghost hunter. And I feel like most girls are concerned that a guy is going to use them for sex. Pretty sure this guy was just using me for my house. Because I live in an old house. Like, there were signs, you know, he never wanted to take me out. He would just come over with all of his equipment and go straight into my bedroom and shut the door. And I heard from outside, he's like, if you're in here, give me a sign. I'm like, I'm right out here. I'm right out here. No, not you. He liked me though, you know, because he would ask about my family. Like he was like asked about like my relatives, my dead dead relatives he wanted to know about. And I opened up to him and I let him know like that my dad passed away. You know, and he was really sweet. He was like, Were you guys close? And I was like, Yeah, we were. He's like, No, did it happen close by? Can we go there? I have my qu- I need I need more footage. I got that's it. Oh, he's an ending. There you go. Um, 
You know what, on this one, first, I want to check in with the Iron Patriot. What do you think about that Iron Patriot? Oh, she's a very beautiful girl. <laughs> there you go. Is that a wedding ring on your finger or some other kind of ring? Well, since it's not on her wedding ring finger, Patriot, that's the way to know that uh, it's not a wedding ring. It's all, you know, it's always on the same finger, or else it's just a ring. Iron Patriot really Oh, like I it. forgot, he can't see out of his mask. Can I take you to Alcott? <laughs> take a rock, please. Oh, yeah, that's a never-ending pasta bowl of disappointment, if I've ever heard it. Are you going to wear that? Are you going to wear the suit? Yes. Okay. <laughs> I, hope the, I hope the Iron Patriot is moisture protection for all the pre-cum he has in his face. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's a funny um, bit, the ghost hunter. I, I, I don't know, man. I think uh, I think you got to dig harder on it. I think it's a funny premise, but like the second joke didn't hit hard at all because... We already kind of saw the game of it all. Yeah. I don't know. What do you mean? Like, we get it. You're dating a ghost hunter. Okay. So, the, I don't know. Maybe build it? I don't know. But it's funny. I don't you think you it's not really... funny enough. What you need to do is you need to date a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> like somebody... Laugh out. On <laughs> and get jokes out of it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Like a, like a headliner? Like someone who's like... That's right. Guy's been on TV? Is that what you mean? Yeah. Maybe uh, somebody... You may who's... already be Facebook friends with him. <laughs> <laughs> Why will this help my career? Jokes. You get some jokes out of it. <laughs> you just, uh, <laughs> just think about it. Put it in there. See What's another dating a ghost hunter joke? Well, have? I love the part where you say, uh, where you say, um, you know, uh, oh, I'm, I'm out here after he goes, are you in here? You know what I mean? And he's looking for a ghost. And I don't really think you could top that with anything afterwards. I think that would be closer to the end. And then okay. to bring, are you still dating this guy? Is it a real story? Or? It's real. Really? No, I dated him for like a, a month. So that's over? Yeah, and he like did not like me at all, so that's where this all came from. So he really rejected you. <laughs> Is that what we're getting at here? Or did you get rid of I him? didn't we both didn't like each other. It was weird. Was it was the like, sex good? No, but like we were both just like, alright. It was, How'd you meet? We worked together. I think where? it's funny that he didn't believe in you, but he believes in ghosts. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That's awesome. Add Dana Moon me, everybody. Dana Moon. We're going to keep it flying. We're trying to get through as many as we can. It feels weird being so critical. It's like, it feels like, I don't know. Like, that was funny. I didn't mean to be critical. Put your hands together for at Maddie Chimeboard talking about Jamba Juice. At Maddie uh, when I moved out to California, I wanted to do some California things, so I went to uh, Jamba Juice. Had a weird uh, weird time. I was standing in line. I had these two young girls in front of me, and they're talking. Next thing you know, they're talking about me, and one of the girls, she leaned to a friend, she goes, He kind of looks like Justin Bieber. <sighs> and I didn't really care until her friend was like, Yeah, he's retarded. <laughs> I was shocked because people usually tell me I look like Ellen. So I take it. That whole dyke cut going on. So whatever, I got uh, I got to the counter, ordered my Jamba Juice, got a razzmatazz, pretty good, I was all excited. Drank it too fast, and I got brain freeze, and it fucking kills you, it's debilitating. I asked my friend, I go, dude, what do I do? He's like, put your tongue on the roof of your mouth, lean your head back, and count down from 10. So I'm sitting there in Jamba Juice, like, 10, 9, 8, 7, and I hear the little girl from earlier say, Clarissa, you're a bitch, she is retarded. <laughs> all right, guys, that's my time. Thank you! Both of your jokes end in retarded. Is that a callback? Did, did I miss it? Uh, yeah, because like, oh, they call okay. me retarded. Shit. Right, Where are you from? I daydreamed in the middle of that. Um, people really think you look like Ellen? Oh, I've gotten, yeah, I've gotten Ellen. I, get, I either get like boy band or like lesbians. It was a lot of references to people you look like off the top. Yeah, it seems heavy. Yeah. I think I, I do that too, like I'll reference someone, like a, I'm an ugly version of this person, you know? Mm -hmm. I only do it like once. Okay. Otherwise it's just like... Yeah, no. Jeff, what do you think he looks like? 
Jeff. You said uh, he said you look. She looks like a retarded Justin Bieber. Yeah. Um, well, I guess you said and you could say you're offended by that because you are retarded. Yeah, I was thinking uh, like you know I've I never wished that. more. <laughs> Come on, guys. Just trying. Uh, I was thinking like I was I, one of my tags I was working on was like I've never wished more in my life to actually be retarded just so I can defend myself. Like, Fuck you, I am retarded. Like you know. But I don't want to like, and then I do the retarded punch again at the end, so I didn't want to be too redundant with that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, the middle kind of, the middle is still a little wishy washy. How long are we doing uh, It'll be three years in November. Patriot, what's the Iron yeah, Patriot, Patriot report on that? I've seen this guy before, and I'm proud of him for coming back because I think he's going to keep improving. I've Thanks. seen him before. Thanks, bud. You've seen him before here, well. We're yeah, this, uh, I think he's going to keep improving if he keeps doing it, you know, every week and, and uh, gives you guys criticism. He's going he's gonna to get better. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, we're going to keep it moving here as we get closer and closer to the end. I'm making our sweet descent, trying to get up as many people as possible. That's Maddie Chimeborn, C H Y M B O R. Put your hands together for Nicole Amy. At Nicole Amy, it's spelled A I M E. Nicole Amy. No gag reflex. Really? No gag reflex? Nope. But, but Benji's not here. He will, he's supposed to. I need. I need. He's right there. He's at the top of the room going pee. I just broke it. The door is open. Yep. Sorry. So uh, I just Josh. got. Uh, Hold on one second. What? There's Josh? Okay, forget it. Sorry, go on. So uh, I just got done going black. And it's true what they say once you go black, you realize everyone you know is racist, <laughs> <laughs> including your mother. Uh, my mom would call me crying and tell me that uh, I was breaking her heart and she was going to die an early death. But this isn't what our family values. And I'm like, we value racism? I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get that in Hebrew school. But uh, she was like, yeah, you're putting me into an early grave. I'm like, mom, if your racism is slowly killing you, maybe you should be dead. Maybe you're an awful person. Uh, she'd also tell me, uh, did I have any idea what it was like to raise an interracial child and how difficult it was? And I was like, no, mom, do you? What black guys have you been fucking? And where is my biracial prettier sister who I hate? That fucking bitch. Um, so I told my mom, I'm like, first of all, um, I'm not even close to having a baby right now. But I will tell you guys, we had the cutest oh, no. miscarriage. There you go. That was a live kitty meow for the first time ever. I think we had an audio issue. Fuck yeah. Very funny. You kill. Yeah, very funny. Please I love make your sure shoes. to uh, hit on me. Uh, tell me I'm attractive because as a female comedian, I want you guys to only see me like that. So proceed. Go. I totally fuck you. you uh, Benji, you. Benji's already tried hooking up with me. Didn't work. Didn't work. He tried, he like put his shoulder into it to like roll me over. I was like, there's nothing more attractive than a man trying to... We kind of, we, we kissed for a second, though, right? No, we didn't. Really? I think we did. <laughs> <laughs> I think I, I think you, I've seem, seen you seem, like, very aggressively, like, tell uh, tell me how bad you want to fuck me. Like, both, did we do that with the other you girls did it, or no, something? No, no, you, you did it with Dana. Yeah, yeah but we also nothing. gave her... We also oh gave God. her great feedback, and, I mean, I don't think... Dana, did you feel like you were taken advantage of up here? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's his shit, though. That's his shit. Yeah, he asked you to go on a date. I was speaking in general. He didn't say you're raped. <laughs> I didn't say anything about myself. Maybe I, that's I'm a... actually not interested. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> that. And I'll say this. Maybe that's just how some guys are, and maybe female comedians have to accept that. that, and that come come animal. Oh, I'm accepting it. I just, I need it. <laughs> come is good for you. It's true. <laughs> it's, seriously. It's the breakfast. You All the vitamins like and uh, nutrients necessary. It's really good for you. Protein. Uh, how much would the Iron Patriot have to pay you for you to stick your foot up underneath his rib cage? <laughs> his rib cage armor padding. For me to stick my foot under his rib cage padding? Yeah. I don't even need money to do that. Oh, wow. Uh, Patriot? What do you think about that? I'm not a black guy, but I think we can get along. Hey, so. <laughs> wait, hold on. Wait, you wait a second. I thought I. <laughs> 
He's not a black guy. However, as we found out earlier, he can rap. So. I got some soul, sister. Is the new guy? <laughs> is the new guy you're fucking black? Uh, I'm fucking black. Person. Jesus, Benji. <laughs> well, you're really racist. Hey, is it a fucking black guy? I mean, are you fucking a black? I mean, no, the new guy I'm fucking is not black. Boo. Oh, so what is he? Did you I just say the N word? I said boo. I was gonna boo. No, did she say no. the N word? No. Oh. Do you get to say the N word in bed when you sleep with black guys? If they so, ask, you know. So you've done that? Yes, yeah, so I've done that. Give us an example. How does that make you? I'll be the black guy. I'll be the black guy. He usually is like, you fucking Jew. No. He's like, kike. And I'm like, mm -hmm. what you Black say? people don't say kike. No, they, well, they, 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 they do? No, they don't. No, no, no they don't. No, no, no. What? Yeah. Kite. 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 They love kites. Blacks well, don't even really know what Jewish people are. It's like Audis. <laughs> That's at Nicole Amy Good on job. Twitter. Good job. I'm sorry, we're, we're in the rushing through. I'm glad that you were able to get you on. Very, very, very funny material, by the way. Yeah, One of the it. best sets of the night. It seems like she hated us afterwards for some reason. Yeah, like, she, like, killed for 60 beginning. seconds straight, well, I think, and then she just attacked us. I think we all probably tried to fuck her at one point, and she just realized it. I don't think, I don't think so. Well, why wouldn't you? She's pretty, and she's, she's friendly. Pretty. What do you think I'm going to do? You're pretty and friendly. And right. I like you. I might try to stick it in you. I'm sorry. This is my condition. Sorry for the people that weren't able to uh, get on tonight out of the bucket. That was uh, that portion of the show. That was the uh, tag it or bag it right out of the bucket. <laughs> the bucket or fuck it. Uh, now we move on to, as every week, it originally started, we uh, close the show with one of our own special creations. Uh, we have two of them here tonight. Uh, we're going to give them both... Uh, a solid 45 seconds <laughs> and uh, so we're pretty excited about this um, going first the uh, challenger the person who's on probation put your hands together for somebody who started here a few weeks ago a regular on this show making her return after not showing up and missing her spot while being called put your hands together for at Sarah dresses and Sarah most a job So I've been going in and out of this relationship uh, for about three years. And it's been in and out and in and out and in and out. Unfortunately, that's the only in and out that's been happening. Uh, we never, ever, ever had sex. Um, I give him a full access pass to an amusement park. Any ride you want. All the fucking rides are open. Raging Waters. Magic Mountain. Nothing. You can use the back door. Nothing. So I've taken a vow of celibacy uh, because I guess one asshole in my pants is all I fucking need right now. <laughs> uh, and so I'm by myself. So I'm on that journey. All right. Is that 45 seconds? I'm trying to, Very funny. Try to uh, fit it in there for you. There you go. Sarah must do job. That's so good. The one asshole you can fit in your pants, that's funny. I don't think I've heard that before. Yeah, I've heard that a lot. You oh, should do okay. it. It's oh. like an 80s joke. I'm serious. Right. Yeah, it seems yeah. like it would be. It seems like yeah, it's I'm really not trying to be rude. I had never heard it before, I so I get excited. But I there you go. So Sorry. Um, if you want to do it, you can. But. All right, let's bring up. And uh, all right, there she goes, Sarah Mostajabi. Good job, Sarah. Um, Maybe Google it and see that I'm not... Just What's the Twitter handle it's, for it, you? It guys? just seems like Sarah Dress. Oh. It's Kimberly Congdon, everybody, the, the defending champion, born and bred, out of this podcast last week for her for, for first set. Now, doing 45 seconds, it's Kim Congdon. All right. Kill cool. Tony Reagan. Um, well, hi. Um, I'm 22 years old. Uh, I hate telling people my age. Every time I say I'm 22, I'm like, I'm 22 years old. People are like, oh, you're so young. You, you don't know anything. You're so naive. You, you don't know life. And I'm like, fucking cut me a break, okay? I've seen shit. I've been here for 22 fucking years. I was around when Justin deflowered Britney, okay? <laughs> like, I know what happens at the end of Titanic. I, I drink a Stella Artois, okay, people? I'm an adult. <laughs> Stella Artois. That's funny. That's very funny. Um, I think it takes too long to get there. Unfortunately, we've really run out of time fast, so we need to get Jeff Richards to do a closing song. 
Um, right. Uh, so, Kim Congdon, thank you so much. That's at oh, Kim Congdon on Twitter, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, Benji, anything you want to promote? And Jeff, real quick before you uh, um, do it. I'm at Tasty Jeff. There you go. Uh, album Greatest Hips coming out in the next couple months. Uh-huh. And uh, Benji Aflalo is at Benji Aflalo on Twitter. Anything else? Um, I'll be at the Death Squad show in La Jolla. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, Comic Con. Fantastic. Yeah. I'm at Tony Hinchcliffe, TonyHinchcliffe.com. I have a brand new the H plus inch Cliff plus E equation t-shirt now available. Uh, and the new Death Squad shirt is also at ShopSquad.tv. Yep. Pre-sales are available. That thing's fucking unbelievable. Okay. Um, I'm so excited to get one myself. And um, now, ladies and gentlemen, closing the show. Thank you all to the performers, everybody. You're going to want to catch this, an exclusive. Jeff Richards. Here he goes. John Sanders on guitar. One, two, three, four. Oh my god, it's that feeling again. It's my downstairs telling my brain who's boss. Wow, what a feeling. Oh, I don't know. I don't know how much more of this I can take. I, I, Jeff wanna app, Jeff wanna app. If you come over, I Jeff wanna app. Get you in trust, get you in trust, and then we can app. I don't have a place, I just have a car. If you come over, we have to app in my car. Get inside my trunk, grab a hold of my junk. I'm so lonely. So lovely. I'm not fat, I'm better than that. My rod is geese and I don't own a cat. <laughs> How can I own a cat? I mean, I live in my car, you know? <laughs> Just wouldn't be fair to the cat, you know? I'm like, I'm like, what if something happened to the cat, you know? Like, what if, what if the cat got like a viral infection or some shit, you know? I mean, that could be really expensive. My friend, my friend Debbie had a cat. It had an esophagus, it was too large for its body, so they put a new esophagus in there. It was like $9,000. And the cat still died. The cat still died! I mean, I don't know if I can go through that kind of turmoil right now. Death wanna ask, death wanna ask. Diddle my middle and get grass. Death wanna ask, death wanna ask. Uncross your legs so I can locate your nest. Deaf wanna app, deaf wanna app. Close your eyes if you have to, I guess. Deaf wanna app, deaf wanna app. I'm super quick. It'll be over before you know it. That's episode six of Kill Tony. Thank you everybody for being here. The Death Squad uh, the, the double header continues. The Ding Dong Show is next. The longest running show in comedy store history. Don Barris is here. Put your hands together for him. It's about to happen. At Comic Patriot on Twitter. Coming in, Clipping Red Band. Thank you.